what made you decide that coaching is what you want to do? Uh, I don't know that I really decided until probably my senior year. I, I was a business marketing degree. Was my, I had a degree in business marketing and, and went for a couple of interviews on campus and, and thought it um, just didn't feel right to me. I, I just felt uh, I loved the game. Uh, I loved the competition of it, uh, the, the intensity of the game. Uh, I loved the schemes and the design of the game and, and how you're all, the, the thought processes in the game. And, and uh, so fortunately, my senior year after I graduated, my coaches at Iowa, Hayden Fry, Bill Brazier was my coach. Uh, they accepted me and allowed me to be a, a graduate assistant uh, coach where I was going to grad school. Uh, really not interested in getting my graduate degree, but was required to be in grad school while I was coaching. And so I was in that position for three years and then two as a volunteer coach. So I came up under some great coaches that, that were really took me under their wing, were really sharp at what they did and, and uh, loved it. If you weren't a football coach, what do you think you'd be, you'd be doing right now? <laughs> Uh, I'd be a football coach at some, at some <laughs> level. If it wasn't in college, uh, it'd be uh, high school or, or somewhere. As a coach, you won the national title in 2000 and stuff. What is the most, single most important key for a team to, to have that much success to win, to win a national championship? Um, accountability um, and, and a sense of, of what's important to the team. Uh, you know, a selflessness and accountability and, and working together because that group in 2000 was special and that it, it probably wasn't the most talented team in the mm -hmm. country in fact I'm sure it wasn't but they played the best together as a team uh, of anybody in the country and, and had enough talent. What's the best thing about winning a football game afterwards just the, just the best the best thing about it? Uh, the best thing about it is seeing the satisfaction of the players uh, their sense of accomplishment and feeling of what they just uh, did and and especially when you get a guy that maybe hasn't played a lot, he, he, he has success and he, he starts to feel what it's like, and, and, or guys that haven't had it for a long time and then they do. You, you get a real sense of satisfaction seeing young players produce and, and grow and, and enjoy those experiences. You've gotten to win a whole lot since you've been in Oklahoma. Fan excitement got really high right at the beginning, and, and do you think things have changed at all, the, the outlook on Oklahoma football and the program or anything like that? I think it's changed since you brought so much success to it in the last? Six years? You know, I, I don't know. Um, I, I think overall people look at uh, the, the length of time and the, and the body of work we've done over a long period of time and the success we've had and, and, and uh, respect that and appreciate it and, and realize that, um, you know, that uh, it's not guaranteed every year. And there are a lot of circumstances that each team goes through every year that you learn from, you grow from, and you build from. And that's what we're doing. And so, uh, um, you know, I still think uh, the overall perception of our, our program is awfully positive. What's the hardest thing about being the coach at Oklahoma? Um, I'm not. I'm a, a pretty private person and a, and a guy that uh, likes. No one likes being an ordinary guy more than me, and it makes it hard sometimes to just be the the average guy or the ordinary guy that you, you're you're used to being or like to be. Uh, but that's okay. I understand that's part of the job, and and uh, so the the attention probably a little bit and the. Um, and also, I guess, uh, having to deal with the media every day. <laughs> All right. Now, you talked earlier about the coaches that helped you choose, helped you become a better coach. Some of the players that come through don't really have a whole lot of family, a whole bunch of, a whole lot of role models that they've looked up. Do you feel any added pressure on yourself to, to coach, the, not, not well, your coach, but to be a, be a role model to these kids and help them in their Well, I, I, don't, find, I don't find it pressure to, to try and put the right things in front mm -hmm. of our players. To me, it's just being, being decent, being a good person, and, uh, and having a good attitude. And, and, and I believe it is part of our job to put the right things in front of our players, uh, to conduct ourselves in the right way. And, but I don't find pressure in it. I find that's just the right thing to do. And, and it's fun to do, you know. So uh, to, to see these young guys grow and mature as, as you have them for four and five years and, uh, and how they change over four and five years. And, and that is part of our job when they're away from their families is for us to, to be in a sense of family and, and to help them do the, you know, the build character. And, and uh, so we, uh, we enjoy doing that. When you recruit players, do you, is it all, is it 100% full talent, what they can do for the program, or do you, do you look at the character of the players? Do no, it's you, never, do you see how they... It's never about strictly talent. Uh -huh. it, it's about the kind of person, character, and, and individual that they are. And, and, um, and character is a big issue and, and work ethic. And uh, so um, those are all factors we do our best to judge. And, um, you know, but they've got to be able to play a little bit too. <laughs> so, uh, I, uh, so anyway, so it's it's we try and get all of it. 
Do you have, I got to ask about the NFL. Is there, any, is there any desire, do you feel like that's another notch on your resume at some point? Like, would you not feel like a, you've done everything that you want to do as a coach if you didn't ever coach in the NFL? Well, you know, everyone says you didn't ever or uh-huh. never or always. Uh, you know, to me as a coach, those are words that you can't use mm-hmm. because you never, you don't know from year to year, you know, where you're going to be and what you want in your life and, and, and what you need or, or what you feel is important. Uh, so. So to me, I never get too far in front of myself. Uh, what I always say or like to say is I love what I'm doing right now, the people I work with, where I'm at, and couldn't be more appreciative. And, and I do feel grateful and fortunate, I guess, to be in the position that I am. And, and I feel we have so much more to do. Uh, you know, at whatever point somewhere, you know, as you, as you get older or as you, as you move on down the line, there's a certain point that, hey, you know what, there's, there's something else out there that I need to do. And, and if that ever comes to me, uh, you know, it may, it may not, you know, and uh, so I'm just not, I don't get too far ahead of, uh, of myself and my career and, and where my family is at this time. And, and uh, but we love it here. We love what we're doing and we're going to continue to build it. What are your goals as a coach in the future? What do you, what do you want to accomplish? Uh, same thing. I'm, uh, all I, all I ha- got on my mind right now is, is this season and working right. with our players this year to make it as good and productive and positive as it can be and, 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 and to improve the program. So um, those are my, you know, immediate goals and, and what's in the future. You know, I look at myself personally and, and uh, you know, after the season, you start to look to the future. Now, about the end, like when coaches like Steve Spurrier had moved up, a friend of yours, it's not about the money. Do you, do you think it's a pride thing for some coaches when they go up and come back down, like Pete Carroll came back, do they have an advantage, like, is it, a, is it a thing of themselves they want to accomplish more goals and, and try to move on to the NFL? Is it really the next level? Do well, I don't, I don't know that we all, any of us look at it as the next level. Mm-hmm. It's another challenge, yeah. and a different challenge is what it is. And, uh, and it never is about the money. It's, it's, you, it's always, to me, it's, it's, a, it's about the challenge of it and, and, and the differences that, the, that are there and, and wanting to, you know, to, to embrace that different challenge and, and you know, see how you fare with it. Are we, a couple weeks ago, Lou Holtz made his asinine comments about the biggest disappointments in college football of Rhett Bomar and Adrian Peters, which is ridiculous. Does, some people, it seems like they don't remember that these are just just college kids. I mean, they're well, just they're just growing up. They're doing their thing. And well, does it ever get on your skin when they say stuff like that? Well, unfortunately, there's a lot said that that probably isn't accurate mm-hmm. yeah. or isn't well thought out. Uh, when you want to criticize a kid of being a major disappointment because he has a major injury. I don't know that that's fair. You know, when you have a high ankle sprain and you're not able to play, why? You know, he hasn't disappointed anybody. He's he's injured. Uh, or you have a young guy like Red who's only started a few games uh, in his college career and is a redshirt freshman. Uh, you know, and, and you know that that's fair to, to make those kind of uh, you know statements about a young guy who's again hasn't been out there very much yet and uh, his supporting cast it, it has to be out there helping him as well. In the past, you've had great quarterbacks that have had experience, and if not, they always have a, gr- a great supporting cast with them. And in Rhett Bomar's case, everybody's young, everybody's kind of learning the system and stuff. Is, is there different expectations now going into games, going to Nebraska, things like that? Is it not always – is, is there any moral victories now or anything like that? Yeah, it's not it, – uh, moral victories, winning at Nebraska, there's nothing moral victory no, yeah. about that. It's winning. <laughs> yeah. So it's being productive um, and, and trying to keep our balance on offense, run and pass, and being smart with the football. and. And uh, we do have to be uh, wise and smart and, you know, on how we try and move it and what we ask our players to do. And, and we do analyze that, you know, each week and, and what our game plan will be. With such a young team, I know that J.D. Reynolds is, is a leader on this team. And Roy Williams has been past Josh Heibel. As these young guys come up, who do you see as being a big leader on this team in the future? You know, I'm, I'm not much on anticipating leaders. I want to see it. Mm-hmm. You know, they have, that's earned on how they work, on how they compete. Uh, you know, their actions off the field and in the classroom. So we'll see, uh, you know, as these young guys, there's potential for a, for a good number of them to be, to be really good leaders. Best football player you ever coached? <laughs> too many. Too uh, many. Too many. Uh, I could go down the line, line here uh, at, at Oklahoma and it, it wouldn't stop. You know, the, uh, there's, there's way too many for me to choose one. Really? When the last chapter of the Bob Stoops coaching of, ever, of everything you've done is all done like what do you want to be remembered for as Bob Stoops? Uh, just being a decent guy and uh, that I brought you know what, whatever we did here was positive and uh, that the players uh, enjoyed their experience here and remember it fondly uh, that's all that matters to me. All right. Thank you very much for sitting down. All right guys.